It's been a while since the last installment of ThruffPost's How To series. Today, we're going to end that hiatus ambitiously with a video about security and privacy in Google's Chrome browser. There's a lot going on in the Chrome settings page, which you can find by clicking on the three parallel horizontal lines in the very top right of the Chrome browser, but we like to keep these videos under five minutes, so we're going to try to focus on only the important stuff, almost all of which is hidden behind the little blue letters that read Show Advanced Settings. We'll start with the privacy settings. As is sort of noted on Chrome's privacy settings page, any services that quote enhance your browsing do so by using your information. Therefore, the privacy wary among us will want to uncheck each of the boxes here that doesn't read send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. If you're security conscious as well as privacy conscious, then you'll also want to check the box that reads enable phishing and malware protection. You'll obviously want to enable Do Not Track, which uses an HTTP header to inform advertising and social networks and other would-be trackers that the user whose traffic they are receiving has requested that they not be tracked online. Next we'll dive into the content settings. Google recommends allowing that local data be set, presumably for performance related reasons, but the most private option is to block all sites from setting any data. We also recommend blocking third-party cookies and site data. We've certainly read malware analyses here at ThreatPost detailing attacks that hide their payload inside images, so opting to not show any images is the most secure, albeit slightly extreme, option. The handlers section in here gets a little wonky for this video series, so we'll skip it. But it's probably best to run your plugins on a click-to-play basis, pop-ups should be disallowed in every circumstance, you should either not allow location tracking, desktop notifications, mouse disabling, and microphone or camera access altogether, or at the very least, set it so that Chrome asks for permission when a site wants to take those actions or manipulate that hardware. You definitely want to make it so that sites have to ask for your permission when they want to have unsandboxed access to your computer. The sandbox is a security mechanism that acts as a sort of virtual environment, separate from your own personal computer, and in which Chrome can safely run third-party code and programs as you browse without the risk of infecting your computer. As a general rule, you want to clear your browser data as often as reasonably possible, if for no other reason than to make it so your browsing history isn't accessible to anyone who logs onto your computer at any time. Another general rule, if it's convenient, then it probably isn't secure. So, if you want to be serious, saved passwords and autofill are a no-no. Plus, as you can see, if you store your passwords in Chrome, anyone with access to your computer can log on and see those passwords in plain text in your settings. Other quick things you'll want to consider include encrypting synced data if you want to have access to your Chrome apps and plugins on multiple devices, establishing a separate encryption passphrase to unlock that data on other devices, always keep an eye out for questionable certificates and disable them on your own, don't wait for Google, if you know a certain certificate or root cert has been compromised. Most malware is signed with self-signed or stolen certificates. If you're not sure, don't allow it. As I said earlier, there's just too much security and privacy related stuff going on in the Chrome browser for us to cover it all in a few minutes. However, if you're interested in getting into it, Chrome's fairly manageable privacy settings page is probably a good place to start. As always, leave any of your own suggestions in the comments section below.